All right, well, I am here with my friend Catherine McNeil um, to talk about her recently released book, Long Days of Small Things, Motherhood as a Spiritual Discipline. And one of the things that I just absolutely love about Catherine, yes, well, there it is, woohoo! Um, one of the things that I just love about Catherine is the way that she is able to bring really deep theological concepts and kind of show how they are relevant to everyday life, just the normal day-to-day -day things in our lives. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Thank you, Jenny. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. And I love that we both have bookshelves behind us. I know. That's I know. Awesome. We were talking about a minute ago, the, the books and us. That's <laughs> So tell me just a little bit about your book and kind of what inspired you to write it. Sure, I'd love to. Well, maybe I'll start with the inspiration. Um, when I, I have three kids. They are currently 10, 8, and 5. Um, you know, but there was a season when they were 4, 2, and newborn. So um, I kept hearing, well, I was at a conference, and I was actually pregnant with my third at the time, very largely pregnant, <laughs> and um, the speaker was talking about spiritual formation and how important it is that when we're in ministry or even just um, trying to serve God in our churches and in our neighborhoods, that we have a really rich spiritual life ourselves, a really close walk with God, and I'm all for that. You know, I'm 100% on board with that. And he said that the basic building block for that, the, the one thing that we could not afford to cut out was having 30 to 60 minutes a day that we spend in silence and solitude. Um, so that, <laughs> yeah. And that just hit me like a ton of bricks because I think in another season of life, I might have said the same thing because that is a really sweet time. It is a really important practice. But I couldn't even go to the bathroom by myself at that stage of life. Um, even in, even if I were to wake up at 2.30 in the morning, probably someone else was awake and wanting me to do something. Um, and, you know, I was pregnant. There was literally a person inside of my body. I was literally never alone. It was definitely never quiet. Um, and I thought to myself, God, who created all this, who created reproduction, pregnancy, mothers, families, um, who not only created it, but blessed it and joined us. Like when he came to earth to meet with us, he came as a baby. He entered into his mother's womb. He was born. He was an infant. He was a toddler. You know, we don't think about it, but it's true. And um, it's not like he's not aware of this season of life and what it requires and what it doesn't allow for. And so I felt confident that he was not up there saying, yeah, you're not going to be able to commune with me in this season. Um, I felt sure that he had another another way that I could find him in this season without quieter time. So that was the inspiration. Um, the book itself has nine chapters, and each one of them looks at an aspect of motherhood and or fatherhood, you know, or um, caregiving, generally speaking. Um, I've talked to some people who are taking care of elderly parents who have appreciated the book. Sure. And um, so uh, it could be like uh, creation or nurturing, loving, disciplining, um, and then also like serving and surrendering and persevering and celebrating. These are all things that we do as moms or dads, um, which are also spiritual disciplines. And then at the end of every chapter, I give three practical ways where we can maybe practice doing these practices mm -hmm. in our life without adding anything new, without adding another thing to our to-do list, um, find ways that we can practice finding God in our daily lives. Sure. So what, if I can ask for a teaser, what are a couple of your favorite things or your favorite tips that you gave people in your book? Um, well, you know, again, I'm not just giving these to people. I'm giving them primarily to myself. So this is definitely something that I am still trying to remind myself about. And for me, it comes down, I think, to the, the most basic ones. Like uh, the very first one I start with is breathing and just remembering that however busy I might be, however stressed or chaotic my life might be, or boring and leisurely, I'm always breathing. And there's this, there's this hook in every single moment where I can remember to take a deep breath in, and take a deep breath out, and that it's God's breath. You know, He mm -hmm. breathed life into us, and so even in this most basic thing, 
this basic building block of life, I can I can remember him. I can remember that my goal is to keep my eyes on him. Um, so I think it's those most basic ones. But um, I don't like to cook, and one of the ones that I need to practice a lot uh, that I talk about in my book is um, the sort of while I'm chopping vegetables or stirring the pot, like just mm-hmm. using sort of that rhythmic or repetitive motion to kind of put my mind back on the physical task that I'm doing and the moment that God is in, which he's not in my worries and my my regrets. Um, I mean, he is, but he's meeting me right here where I'm chopping carrots. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that I love about that is I mean, I think nowadays, when we think about prayer, when we think about spiritual disciplines and connecting with God, I think in some ways we almost spiritualize it more than it used to be. I mean, we hear about like the ways that the, the Hebrew people prayed. There was so much more motion involved. There was music. It was a very physical thing, along with being physical. just something that our brains did. There, there were those physical actions that they took um, that really That's... help us to connect with whole people, you know, not just spirit, but also, you know... Right our bodies right yeah and that goes back to that same kind of core message and core motivation that i think a lot of ways we have reduced spirituality to something that is done with my attention span um something that's done uh in my focus which again that's really important but you know when i am changing a diaper or breastfeeding a baby or driving my kid to soccer practice, I'm serving. And I'm serving in a way that really causes me to sometimes sacrifice and surrender and persevere. And God's work in the world has always been physical, from creation to, like I said, his incarnation. And when he was here, he would take bread and he would take wine and he would take fish and he would take water. And that's, he talked about sheep. He talked about lost coins. Like it was those really physical things that he used to introduce us to himself and to his kingdom. And I think we still can. We can still find him in those physical, everyday things. Absolutely. You know, I'm going to tell you a story about when you're talking about breathing. Um, several years back, I was running a, a Bible study for, for women, and I had gone through this short series on just spiritual disciplines and introducing them to some of those different things like breath prayers and stuff like that. But probably it was a couple of years after that, I got an email from one of them um, saying that when she was really stressed, you know, one of her kids had a lot of medical problems and she was always going back and forth from children's hospital, um, lots of, lots of difficulties, lots of stress, lots of strain. She said that she still remembered the one thing she could do was just breathe and remember Mm -hmm. God and pray as she breathed. So I think those things are so, um, they're so valuable, you know, for that, that busy, crazy phase of life when, things are stressful or when things are boring, um, just really being able to root ourselves in um, kind of the physical realities and how God meets us there. I think we don't talk about that enough as moms, so I'm so excited about your book and all the good that it's going to do to people who read it. Thank you, Jenny. I hope so. I hope I start the conversation. Absolutely. So, okay, so if there's one thing that you wanted readers to take away from your book, what would that one big thing be? I think the one big thing is that in a season when we're exhausted and we are at the end of our rope, that God is not asking us to do one more thing in order to enter, be worthy to enter his presence, that he is already here, that he has entered into this day and this task and this season, and he is He's right here. That is wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I'll put up a slide with the, with your book and the information on it so anyone who's watching can hop over and order it from their favorite bookstore. But it's been great visiting with you today. Thank you. You too. And hi, everyone watching. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see you later, Catherine. All right. Bye, Jenny. Bye.